Hello, I am Jose Elizondo. I am a Mexican composer and uh, I write mostly music for classical music concerts. The music that I write tends to be very melodic, lyrical, tonal, and it's often inspired by music from Latin America. Uh, one thing that is very different about me is that I'm also a technologist. I have a degree in engineering from MIT and I spend most of my time, uh, in fact all my professional career, I have worked full-time as an engineer um, in the field of technology that allows us to communicate you know, humans and computers using natural language. And so we do a lot of technologies related to speech recognition, applied linguistics, natural language processing, and even some artificial intelligence. It's very exciting stuff and it has changed the way that we interact with technology. But I'm very blessed and I feel very privileged to be able to have a second life as a composer of classical music. It's a very different world, a very beautiful world, and I just feel very blessed to be able to have that in my life as well. I grew up playing the piano and the organ, and I was very active as a child and as a teenager, giving recitals and participating in national competitions. And um, unfortunately, when I went to university for my engineering, um, I injured my hands and I was unable to continue performing. However, unexpectedly, after taking just a couple of classes in composition, I found myself with opportunities I hadn't expected. I wrote a piece as a homework that ended up being performed by a major orchestra in California and uh, it, had, it was uh, quite an extraordinary experience and soon after I met Carlos Prieto, one of the most extraordinary musicians in Latin America and quite an icon as, a, as an artist, uh, author, philanthropist, and I received my first commission to write a piece for him. He asked me to write a piece for two cellos for a concert he was planning to do with no less than the incomparable Maestro Yo-Yo Ma. So you can imagine that was quite quite extraordinary twist uh, of events for my life and this was the moment when I realized that I wanted to also uh, pursue composition a bit more seriously and um, also not having ever played any string instrument I became somehow very focused on writing music for cello and that has been one of my passions and of course I write for other instruments as well but that is my specialty. At the time, it was mostly up to my piano teacher, my organ teacher, and other people like them to put on recitals, and that was the cultural life of the city. And uh, so I was very blessed to be part of that, but it was not until I came to Boston and I was exposed to the extraordinary choirs and orchestras of the city that um, I experienced a, a, a different level of, of musical engagement. And in fact, my first few years in Boston, since I was at the time in university, studying at Harvard and at MIT at the same time, there was not a lot of time for me to do that. And so it was truly after university that I had the opportunity to immerse myself in the music culture in Boston and actually take advantage of the many wonderful opportunities that living in a city like that uh, can afford you. When I start writing a composition, I often sit down at the piano and come up with some melodies or try to figure out some rhythms, and I tend to take notes in pen and paper, but I do find that software notation programs are a very important tool and it's something that I use very frequently when I'm writing. When I write a new composition, there's often multiple layers of ideas that I'm trying to incorporate into the piece. Some of them may come from the person who commissioned the piece, from the place where it's going to be performed for the first time, from the performers who are going to do so, and often there is a personal element, as I had mentioned, and so all of these ideas are in my mind, and I try to find what's the common thread among them and it's in the intersection of all these different images that I'm able to find the most fruitful seeds for starting a composition. For example, when I wrote La Alborada de la Esperanza, The Dawn of Hope, the 
person who had commissioned was this extraordinary cellist, Sebastien Octo, and the piece was uh, meant to be performed in two very important events, one of them commemorating the 100th anniversary of the armistice that ended World War I, and the other one was a meeting of hundreds of thousands of young people in Panama, celebrating life and, and hope for the future. But at the same time, uh, around that time, I lost somebody very important to me, and um, so all of these three things had to be somehow incorporated into the piece. I found that the concept of a journey from darkness to light made a lot of sense for all three, where you acknowledge where there is the, the conflict, the tragedy, the pain, the mourning, and then there is this moment where whether it is because of the love and compassion of people or their intentions for peace and, and harmony, that you're able to finally lift your head again, enjoy the, the, the light of the sun, and understand that there is hope for the future. So all of these ideas came together into this piece that is now the, the dawn of hope. And it's a very intellectual journey for me, so I don't particularly travel to places to find inspiration except in my mind. And it is a very visual process. As a classical composer who mostly writes for recitals or concerts, I do all my orchestrations myself. And in fact, um, for most of my compositions, I write multiple versions, whether it is for cello solo, cello ensemble, uh, cello and orchestra, or piano and cello, or some other combinations. And so I enjoy writing these different versions. And I find that I learn a lot by doing them and I am able to explore different aspects of the compositions. But yes, I do all that work uh, myself. Early in my career, I received a couple of invitations to conduct my own compositions. It was a lot of fun and um, I was very grateful for those opportunities. However, I feel very lucky that these days I'm able to listen to my music performed by people who are infinitely better than I could ever be at performing these pieces. And um, however, I am very, very happy always to be part of the rehearsal process. I find it very valuable and a lot of fun because not only do you get to clarify practical things about the notation in your score, but also it allows you to connect with the performers emotionally and, and be able to emphasize the things that are important to you in the piece. And usually, you know, if you give some room to the performers, to instill their personality and to express the piece in a way that is meaningful to them, the performance is going to be much better. I specialize in writing music for cello, but I also write for other instruments. So the idea of being able to use ethnic instruments is very intriguing. I have not explored it too much except for my first composition, and these days I find myself writing a lot for very standard formats, string orchestra, string quartet, cello and piano, or other things that are more usual. But I do admire very much the music that I hear that explores these sonorities, and I'm always uh, intrigued and inspired by listening to, to composers who play with that. Without a doubt, Bach. His music is just so extraordinary, so beautiful, so spiritual, so moving, and so intellectually stimulating as well, that it is difficult not to be inspired by, by its greatness. The monumental suites for cello by Bach have been one of the most important sources of inspiration for me. I should also mention that Latin American composers have been extremely important for me. I admire them and respect them very much, particularly the music of Eitor Villalobos. I mean, people know some of his pieces, but if you go deeper into his incredibly vast catalog of, of pieces, it's just absolutely amazing what you find, the variety, the richness. Some of his pieces, like Huiracuru, a ballet that is based on the song of an Amazonian bird, just puts you in a different world of sound. Imagining the Amazonian jungle is just fascinating. And then there's, of course, you know, his beautiful, romantic, lush works as well. And so I find him to be one of the great composers who I admire very much.
Sure, I'll be happy to talk about that. I'm most looking forward to, and I'm really excited about the upcoming premiere of my composition Canta Bridge and Reflections, which is a piece for two cellos that I wrote for maestros Carlos Prieto and Yoyo Ma. And it will just be such a joy and such an honor to hear this incredible artist perform my music again. The other piece is based on a solo cello piece that I had written for German cellist Benedict Klopner, this fantastic cellist. And this piece um, was already recorded and premiered, but we have decided to expand it and make a cello concerto out of it. And it's going to be a very epic and very romantic piece. I can't wait to, to hear it premiered. And, and there's a couple of orchestras that are already uh, looking into programming it for next season. And so these are the main projects, but of course there's many other recordings and concerts and other pieces that I'm working on. I feel very blessed and very fortunate to have the opportunity to be part of the International Composers Festival. I am very grateful to Maestro Piatti and all the people who are making this festival possible. Um, it's such an honor to be able to have my music performed in, in, in company of so many other distinguished composers and, and by such incredible performers. I can't wait to be there, to meet all these people, to experience all these concerts. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing this experience with everybody. Um, thank you very much for letting me be part of it.